Hi, I'm Mark from eReplacementParts.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a trimmer carburetor. Most hard starting or poor running issues with a trimmer are caused by the carburetor. This is caused by fuel being left in the carburetor for an extended period of time, like over the winter months. Most equipment manufacturers will suggest that any fuel older than about 30 days is considered unusable and should be disposed of. And this includes any fuel that might be left in your gas can. The addition of ethanol in our modern fuels makes this problem even worse, as the ethanol tends to increase the amount of corrosion and gumming up inside the carburetor. Fortunately, this is an easy problem to fix, and we're going to show you how to do that in this video. I'll get started by removing the carburetor from the trimmer. I'll use a couple of fuel line clamps to clamp off the fuel lines. And that'll pull the fuel lines away from the carburetor. With the carburetor removed from the trimmer, I'll start the cleaning process by first getting any of this dirt off the exterior of the carburetor. That way we won't transfer that dirt to the internal parts when we take the carburetor apart. Now we can begin disassembling the carburetor. On my particular carburetor, I'll start by removing the throttle body. You'll notice one of the screws is blocked by the throttle plate. To get access to that screw, I'll just back off the idle screw. And now I can pull out that screw. One thing I found helpful when disassembling small two-cycle carburetors is to lay out all the parts in a row in the same order that you remove them from the carburetor. Now I'll flip the carburetor over and disassemble the bottom side. I already removed the primer bulb, the primer bulb base. Now we have access to the diaphragm and the diaphragm gasket. There's the diaphragm and the gasket. Now I'll use a screwdriver to pry the metering base away from the rest of the carburetor. I'll turn my attention to the metering base and remove the metering needle. It's held in place with a single screw. There is a spring underneath this assembly, so I want to keep a finger on it as I pull away the screw and then carefully remove the metering, metering lever, hinge pin, spring, and the needle. Now I'll turn the metering base over and remove this little filtering screen. Now back to the main carburetor body. I'll remove the reed valves, the gasket, and now I have access to the main jet. And again, I'll use a pick to pry that out of the carburetor. There's a small O-ring on that jet. Now we can begin cleaning the internal portions of the carburetor, primarily the small passages on the main carburetor body and on the metering base. 
There's a couple ways you can do this. You can just use a can of carburetor cleaner and spray the cleaner through all the small openings on these parts. The other method you can use to clean your carburetor, and the method that I prefer, is an ultrasonic cleaner. You can pick up a small ultrasonic cleaner like this for under $100 at a discount tool store. The ultrasonic simply uses water and some dishwashing soap. You place the parts of the carburetor you want to clean inside the ultrasonic, and then simply set the amount of time you want the ultrasonic to run for and turn it on. A good ultrasonic cleaner will also have a heater that will heat the water inside the, the cleaner, which will make it clean better and faster. Now that the ultrasonic is finished, I can pull the parts out and clean them off with a little bit of compressed air. Now that we have the pieces of the carburetor clean, we can begin rebuilding the carburetor. To do that, we need a carburetor rebuild kit. You can find the correct carburetor rebuild kit in some cases by looking at the trimmer manufacturer's breakdown for that particular trimmer. In other cases, you'll need to know who built the carburetor. In this case, Walbro. You'll use the markings on the carburetor to determine what model the carburetor is. And then find the correct rebuild kit by looking up the parts diagram for that particular carburetor. I'll pour the contents of the carburetor kit out. These carburetor kits are made so that the parts will fit many different carburetors. We're not going to use all of the parts in the kit. What I like to do is take each piece of the carburetor kit one at a time and compare it to the parts that came out of the carburetor. And then I'll just swap out the pieces that I'm going to use. One piece I didn't clean on my ultrasonic cleaner is the main jet, so I'll clean it with a little bit of carburetor cleaner now. Now I can begin reassembly. First I'll slide the new o-ring onto the main jet and then press the jet back into the carburetor body. Then I'll place the reed valve gasket onto the carburetor body, followed by the reed valves. Now I'll reinstall the metering needle assembly into the metering needle body. First I'll slide the hinge pin in through the metering lever. Then I'll hang the metering needle onto the lever, set the spring in the body, and set this assembly down inside of the metering body. I'll be compressing the spring as I do this, so I want to be careful not to lose any of these parts. I'll hold that in place and reinstall the screw. Now I'll turn the metering body over and install the new filtering screen. 
A trick I found when installing these is that the back side of a Sharpie marker is the perfect size to press that screen back into the body. Now I can place the metering body back onto the main carburetor body, followed by the diaphragm gasket and the diaphragm. and then our primer base. Now place the primer onto the primer base, reinstall the cap, and secure the carburetor together with the screws. Now reinstall the throttle body. The throttle body can be positioned in two different directions. So you'll want to look at the orientation with your trimmer and make sure you install it the correct way. And then I'll just secure it with the screws. Now that our carburetor is clean, I can install it back onto the trimmer. Our card kit came with a new O-ring for the air filter base, as well as a new gasket for the back side of the carburetor. I'll just line everything up and reinstall it onto the trimmer. Now I'll reinstall the fuel lines. And I'll reinstall the throttle cable. When we took the carburetor apart, we backed off the idle screw. So I'll just turn this back in a ways to give us a preliminary adjustment. And then once you have the trimmer running, you can fine tune it from there. And I'll finish up by reinstalling the air filter and air filter cover. And that's how easy it is to fix your trimmer carburetor. As you can see, this is a simple repair that you can easily do yourself and save yourself a lot of money. We hope you found this video helpful please feel free to leave a comment or ask us a question.